Hey everybody, how's it going? So, the long-awaited Shaltir has finally come out, and when I first saw her skill set, I thought she seemed pretty crazy. Um, just overall really versatile character that does a lot of really great things, right? So her S3 is an ability that is 100% hit chance, none of this 50% nonsense you see on so many characters, which I thought was great, and, you know, kind of lore-friendly, right? The Purify and Javelin always hits. Um, also, it has this really cool thing where it ignores effect resistance if they have lower attack than her, and they're basically always gonna have lower attack than her unless the opponent's already gone first and done some stuff to you. So, this is really great that it dispels before the attack too, dispels invulnerability, immortality, um, you know, defense buff, anti-crit, any of that stuff, barriers, so it's really, really nice, it's just a really solid ability, even though it's so simple. Rest 2 is just a really great ability where you take less damage, uh, you can't die in one hit. And it has this really cool thing where you give yourself attack buff and stealth. So in a way, as long as she's able to get one turn, she kind of becomes this sort of Spectre Tenebria-ish type unit. Not literally the same, right? But it makes it a little bit more difficult for people to really get you because they have to hit you with an AoE and then a single target usually after. Keep in mind though, she's only getting that attack buff if she actually has a good amount of HP remaining. Otherwise, you might not really hit that hard. Her S1 is actually really great because injury is just so solid in the current meta. People really tank up, especially with Laia, and Laia is one of the most picked characters in the entire game. And not only is she a fire unit, which is good against Laia, but also the fact that she's constantly putting injury just makes her so much more useful since you see Laia in almost every match of every single game you play in RTA. Um, and it's really cool that the Soul Burn actually not only increases damage to around the same damage as her S3, so it's a pretty big nuke, but also just 20% injuries a lot. So this is how I built my shelf here. Realistically, I think you want to use her own artifact. You could use something else, but I just don't think it's worth it, and especially since it's a collab, try to get the artifact from the powder shop if you don't pull it while you're going for her banner. I also put her on speed pen, and I gave her some of the best DPS gear on my account. She's like... 447 gear score or something, so if you notice all the gear, um, really high equipment score, and just tons of damage, speed, crit chance, and that's basically it. I just tried to give her my premium stuff, because I wanted to make her really shine. Um, I have her triple S uh, imprint as well, because, uh, well, I wanted to max all the Overlord characters out. So how is her performance overall? All in all, I think Shaltir is a pretty solid character. Here's the caveat though, you cannot use her in RTA at the moment, because right now uh, RTA season's about to end, so they don't let you use new units, so in about 8 days or so we'll actually be able to truly test this character in the field. But until then, my current opinion is I think she seems like a very solid character. She's not insane, but she's definitely not bad. Um, some people think that she's kind of like a worse Zahawk, but Zahawk's difficult to use in that he needs to take an extra turn, a lot of the time he needs to use a non-attack skill, um, he's kind of a one and done character where he S3s and then, you know, the opponent can just target him with debuffs or potentially just kill him, strip his buff, take him out. He's like a one and done assassin that's really fast and easy to build, and he does have that edge over Shaltir when you're just trying to kill Aiden. But she has the ability to be in a match for a long period of time and really be dishing out a lot of damage, and she's also really good versus these health scalers, and she's able to kill Aiden. That's a plus that um, Zahawk doesn't have. Um, the one issue is that, well, she needs to take a turn to go invisible, so maybe it's possible you actually want to build her faster with lower damage, but I do really like having her be a big nuke. And her S3 and S1, they don't ignore defense, they don't um, ignore damage sharing, none of those special tricks, they're just big damage. So if you actually ban the opponent's mitigation, like they don't have Aureus or Adamant Shield or anything like that, she kind of just instantly kills anything with her S3 almost, except like a big tank, really. Um, so she has really solid damage. But she's not a character you're going to be able to draft in every match. I would say she's more of a pick third to fifth pick in a draft. Now let's also talk about Guild Wars and Arena. I think that she might actually be a pretty solid character in maybe both of the modes. Probably more Guild Wars than Arena. Um, I mean, she's just a pretty secure DPS with not really any RNG involved. Just big damage, has a safety net in her S2. Um, no RNG in her S3, even when you have mischance and the enemy's a blue unit, you're still gonna have 100% chance to hit. That's amazing, right? 
Um, what are her weaknesses? Well, she's bad versus constant AoE, duh. She's bad versus heavy debuffs, and she's bad if the opponent has first turn openers that wreck her. So you kind of have to use her in aggressive teams, an aggressive setup. Um, I'm not exactly saying cleave, like you could potentially use her in cleave, but I more mean in a setup that's like, I'm going really aggressive, using someone like Emopolitis, Emolilius, um, you know, Knockwall, all that kind of stuff. Maybe even Moon Bunny, aggressive kind of teams. You can't really utilize her if you're going full tanky slow, unless, I think it's possible, if you have a team that's supportive enough and you're using characters like Laia, and then you run something like Bastion of Perlusia on your tank, giving her the shield, maybe she's actually going to be a solid DPS, um, just like, for a slower team, potentially. Some people are even thinking, what if you build her on counter set? And I know counter set sounds so stupid, like, because she's invisible all the time, right? But what if someone AoEs you? And she would die because she gets hit by an attack after, but then she counters and she heals it back with uh, the pipe at Lance. I mean, that would be pretty cool, right? But that would require unholy levels of gear, and so realistically, I think Speed Pen is ideal. Pen is also better than Torrent, just by the way, because she has no pen already in her skill set, and she only does single target, so it's really strong. I also recommend maybe picking up a second copy of this artifact. Um, I always just kind of recommend this in general, because who knows what the future might hold but you know don't break the bank or don't go too crazy for it um i'm farming really hard on this event though so having um extra imprints in the artifact is just going to make it so i get more event drops and i'm going to go crazy with the event and get lots of good stuff hopefully so obviously maxing that i was pretty nice also one little side thing if you triple us the units then in the lobby they actually show a glow so she gets the red glow and she gets the purple glow when you triple us them i'm a huge fan of overlords so Obviously, I was going to max these units, but that was a cool little bonus that made me kind of happy. Anyways, that's about it for my descriptions of Shaltir, and for the rest of the video, I'll show you some of the fights I did in the mock lobbies. Keep in mind, this is preliminary review of the character because we can't test her truly in the field, and mock lobbies are not absolutely accurate for really the performance of characters. But thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you next time. Um... I'm not fast enough on them. Hmm, wait, maybe I'm okay. Hold on. Hold on. This might be winnable. This just might be winnable. No soul burn or anything. They resisted too, which kind of sucks, but... Nothing I can do about that. So she pushes up a lot. Okay, so... 119%. And I go to 118%. That sucks. <laughs> um... Maybe I should have just s one I think s one's the better play. Yeah, I think holding S3 is a good idea. Yeah, that was a huge misplay that I made. You definitely want to hold it. Well, now I know. Get these ads out of my face. So, hey, Turk, thanks for resubbing for 20 months. Thank you, dude. I appreciate it. Oh my god, I'm almost dead. Thank you. <laughs> I think we might be okay. Yeah, you see, if I still had Shell Tears S3, I could just insta strip these buffs and her defense buff, and I would just like auto win, right? So that was a huge mistake on my part. It's a learning experience right here. You really should be careful and save it whenever possible. Bro, you really. Lil Bro really just didn't sleep them? What are you doing? Lil Bro, what was that? Ow. Okay, this should kill though. Barely. <laughs> don't crit? Or I mean, don't hit, I guess. I think we can win this. I, th I think this is winnable. She's not going to be able to get attack buff very easily, which obviously sucks, but... She's about to get S3. 
I think this is very winnable. As long as she doesn't die right here. Nah, she's fine. I, I think we can do this. Is that 60%? Anyone got binoculars? I don't, I don't know. Like, it's really close. Uh-oh. Oh, we're fine. So we don't have soul burn, but this is going to do an all right dam uh, amount of damage. And then... Oh. Okay, that was actually a lot. How much damage does Shaltir do without attack buff, though? That was actually a lot. I forgot that lie is the most OP thing ever. 5,500. All right. <laughs> um. I mean, I guess it would be nice if I can just strip and push this back. It might not really have F Rose because it has immunity. thing is um shouldn't they have slept her i feel like that would have worked better <laughs> banger duel well let's see the damage no way this kills right Fourteen thousand. <laughs> oh that's so too- that's so close. Really too bad. Hmm. I'm assuming S3 does more damage, so it probably would have killed him. But I don't think it really matters too much. I guess the better play was to use her S2 and then S3 him. I think you need confidence in this character. You need to be like, I will kill. Like, this moon bunny is gone, right? I wish I could see the damage difference, but we kind of need the numbers to that. Like, I'm just gonna S3, because why not? Oh yeah, she has a guaranteed strip on people, which is really cool, honestly. 20,000, huh? wonder how much the S1 does. I'm not sure if extra tankiness is really worth it at all on Shaltir, because that also means you're proportionally healing less with her artifact. Which means you won't go get over the 50% threshold all the time. I know I can attack Shaltir, but I want to see... I mean, not Shaltir, uh, Spectre Tenebrio. But I want to see Shaltir's damage to them. Soul Burn. Hmm. Not crazy. I mean, she gets a huge defense increase, but still. So, I made a uh, tactical error of putting him in back when he's on Bastion and Perlusha. So, uh, whoops. Oops. We don't even need it, so it doesn't matter, though. So, you know, like, who cares, really? It's fine. It's no big deal at all. So, he's enraged. He's mad. So, this will defense break and stun their whole team? Right? Surely? Did a pretty good job of that. So, their defense broken, fire versus grass. Surely this kills, no matter how tanky you are, right? 35,000, thank you. Thank you for killing. And then, Shaltir goes in for another 24,000. And we're lapping around. Okay, we're lapping around. How much do we get here on Albedo? 30,000, all right. I mean, they're all defense broken, keep in mind, right? But still, I mean, it's kind of nice to see all that damage, right? They counterattacked, but then they died, so they holy sacked. 
I think this kind of shows the power of Emil Politis more than it does of Shaltir, to be honest, but... At least she's able to follow up with it just fine, right? Because she is a big DPS type unit, right? But, uh... She worked! Dude, this is like the actual squad! We got Shaltir and Albedo, and, uh, Ainz is nowhere to be seen, but, uh... Wait, what? Is- this is a bait ran? You have a zero speed ran that's just, like, full tank? I mean, I guess my Zeo pick didn't matter, but what? Yeah, some people have, like, tank effect as rans to, like, bait it, but... I mean, I don't know if you really baited me, though. Okay, 27,000 damage, not bad. Uh, I'm gonna soul burn this. This should kill, right? I'm crit. Oh my god, he's so tanky. Did that just say 12,000? He's, wait, he's like 20-something thousand HP, what is he on? Huh? He's so tanky. Oh, since she got stunned, she can't counter or anything. Yeah, 22,000 HP. Wow. Well, at least Albedo wakes up now. I don't know if they should have used the S2, to be honest. I guess they can Solver and Spectre now. Maybe that is good. Oh! Oh, because they attacked her before, she still has the counter-attack. Wait, that's so good. Oh, yeah, I forgot that's how that works. That's huge. And Shoutier is... She's chilling. She's totally safe. Dude, the lore team. Do you guys remember in Overlord when Moonbunny and Zeo met up with Shoutier and Albedo and they all hung out and then fought together? Only true fans know about that part. It's in the web novel. Alright. 